You know, when you ask ChatGPT something and it gives you the answer, usually it asks you for a feedback on that answer, right? Now, before ChatGPT was made available for the general public, it happened a lot of times and people got paid for it to rate the answers. Let me hit you with an example. If you ask ChatGPT why Americans voted for Trump, usually it's just gonna spit out the answer, which is not clear to me, but let's just see. When you get the answer, usually you're gonna get this. So whether this was a good response or it was a bad response. And that is essentially what you get paid for on Stellar. The same thing over and over again, but it's not for ChatGPT, it's for new tools. And if you follow the AI scene, there's like a new tool coming every day. And Stellar operates with all the new tools. They provide the workforce in order for those companies, those developers to get real feedback from real humans, right? And then of course, the developers of that AI tool, that particular AI tool, well, they're just gonna fix the bugs and they're just gonna make their tools better, right? Now here it says that you can earn $25 per hour. And of course it's flexible hours. You can work remotely. You can work from whichever country you want, but you still have to have some kind of knowledge. It's not hard, but you should possess certain skill and certain field of activity. Not a lot, just enough so you can provide the feedback. So you can read the responses and then you can just rate it. So first of all, just Google for it. Stellar AI. I'm not going to give you any links. I'm not affiliating with it. This is how the homepage is going to look like. And, you know, first of all, on the right hand side of here, you can see some of these fields of activity. So there's history, there's law, humanities, creative arts, you know, a lot of things. If you scroll down, you can see that let me just pass through these reviews. As you can see, it's basically, you know, the more time you invest in this, well, the more money you will eventually get out of it. And you're not on a fixed hourly rate. You're not on under any contract or something like that. And yeah, no previous experience needed. You just have to have a little bit of skill in using these tools. And I think everybody has a little bit of experience with using ChatGPT or something like that. What is good about this is that they will give you the training. So for example, if you choose something that, you know, something that interests you, one of these topics, they will provide training for you, right? So it's called onboarding process. But before you get to the onboarding process, there is this like test that you can do. And today I'm, I'll just go over this test because it's gonna be like anywhere from 45 to 90 minutes. And I'm, I'll just go through the answers so you can just have an easier time if you decide to work with this one. Trust me, it's not hard. All you have to do is to do a little bit of a, you know, Google search, right? So that's all that you have to do. It's not hard, anyone can do it. And yeah, let me just show you. Typical tasks, select which AI chatbot answer is the best, all right? This is exactly what I've shown you with ChatGPT example. In this task, you will be asked to write a question for an AI chatbot on a topic you're familiar with. You will then get two different answers and you will need to judge which of the two is better. Then there's correct answers from AI chatbots in your field. This is if you have kind of, you know, a little bit of experience in certain niche, certain topic. And this one is to deal with online research on a specific topic. You have to come up with an online research topic and then capture all the steps you take to do this research. How much can you expect to earn? As I've told you at the beginning, 25 an hour. This is the base rate. Although, as they can say, it can vary based on the type of project and, of course, most importantly, number of hours you choose to work. Let me get this straight out of the way. This is not a get-rich-quick scheme, right? This is not something that you can do without your mind, without your presence, and without your dedication. You have to sit there and you have to rate the responses in the best way possible, right? So it is up to you. It is work, after all, and it will depend on your effort. That's it. I have to mention this as well because these basic requirements, it's just, well, that you have 18 years or older, right? Internet connection, strong attention to detail, blah, 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 fluency in English, and yeah, PayPal account. PayPal account is unfortunately the only way they can pay out right now. Maybe they will add something in the future, but PayPal is for now the only way. 
And yeah, this is what I will be sharing with you today, this application process. You will just share some info about yourself, and this is gonna be the most important part, completing a skill match test, right? So let's just go with it. What do you have to do? Go on to the platform, click on get started button, which is located here, email address, password, you know how it goes. And then right away, you will get skill match. So the following assessment is designed to give you more information about the skills needed to work with us. It also helps us to ensure we have the right type of work for you. And yeah, this is important. This is take this test will take about 45 to 90 minutes to complete. And after you complete it, we will review it and let you know if we have the right type of work for you. So I'll show you some of these questions right now. You can write them down, you can save this video, and then you can just go and proceed with your skill match test when you feel ready for it. So this is the button, start assessment here. Click on the go button here. And this is the first question. So the most important part is to read the questions thoroughly, right? So this one is at what age did the father of the person who proposed the right to royalty and perpetuity and the copyright designs and patents act, blah, blah, blah. This sounds too confusing and this sounds too hard. But trust me, it is not. It is not, all right? Just Google search. It has to be dedicated Google search. So I'll just show you how to use it. In fact, they even just tell you this. Use Google to research this question and then select the answer below. You've got four options here. So what am I gonna do now? Because I don't know what is this, this Copyright Patent Act, which happened in this year in the United Kingdom. So first of all, I'll just copy this and I'll just right click on it and I'll just search Google for it with this, or you can just copy and paste in Google. And then you can read a bit about it. First of all, you have Wikipedia, and then of course you're gonna have a lot of these other ones. So now I read through it and, you know, just get myself acquainted with the topic. But actually the question was, at what age did the father of the person who proposed this? So there was a person that proposed this that's what I'm gonna find out first. So the person who proposed this, I'll search on it through Wikipedia, right? First of all, this one, but I gotta find the exact one, right? So there's a lot of these as you can see. So what I need is I need a keyword because as you can see, this is royalty and perpetuity, right? This is the whole thing, Copyright Designs and Patents Act, but this royalty and perpetuity is a subtopic. So I'm just gonna take this keyword and I'll search for it here, right? So on Wikipedia, just press Control plus F and this down here will appear. And now I can just paste that keyword here. And as you can see, I found it here and this is related to Peter Pan. So section, blah, 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 blah. Royalties and perpetuity proposed by Jim Callahan. So that's where you are, right? So this person, Jim Callahan, he did it. He proposed it. So I'm just gonna click on this fella. And you can see that he died in 79, but this is not what we're looking for. We're looking for his father, right? So father, that is the question. So now I'm just gonna ask, and I'm just gonna Google search for his father. Maybe it's even gonna be on his Wikipedia profile. And if I just scroll down, I can see some of it. For example, early life and career. So he was born at 38 Funnington. He took his middle name from his father, right? So there you are, the father, he was born 77, and this is 1921. So what am I gonna do? I'm just gonna find this out. 1921, 1877, 44. And there you have it. You click here on 44, and then you just explain your answer. So you just write the steps as we did them, right? So it's just something like this. Google for this act found the person who proposed it, and then found his father, right? Just like this. Click on the next button here, and then you're on to the next question. Now, the next one is way more easier because as you can see, given the following prompt to an AI model, which AI model produces a stronger response? So prompt was write an email to my assistant asking to move my 11 a.m. meeting with Leslie to 4 p.m. So right away, you can just read through these. 
The first one is I need to reschedule by 11 a.m. meeting with Leslie to 4 p.m. today. And the second one is kindly move my alignment with Leslie to 3 p.m. today. And you can see right away that this is not correct. So the time is not correct. So I'm gonna choose the output number one here and I'll just write the time was not correct. Afterwards, after this one, they're just getting easier. And if you want me to do all of it, just write me down in the comments because, well, then I'll just have to do it for at least one hour. So yeah, but trust me, it's not hard. Just go and Google for it and just read through the questions, but make sure you have 90 minutes free time. Dedicate yourself and it's gonna be easy, trust me. And then just get the work you need. Wish you good luck. And yeah, I'll catch you on the next one.